bits per second, or BPS. This is the most basic unit for measuring data transfer speed. It tells you how many bits, the smallest pieces of digital information, are sent or received every second. So if your connection is 1 BPS, that literally means 1 bit travels each second, which is extremely slow. To put it in perspective, sending just one character like the letter A, which is 8 bits or 1 byte, would take 8 full seconds at 1 BPS. Of course, no modern connection is that slow. But BPS forms the base of every other speed unit you see, kilobits, megabits, gigabits, and beyond. Whenever you see internet speed, it's actually talking about how many bits per second your connection can handle. Kilobits per second, KBPS. A kilobit per second equals 1000 bits per second. This was the first practical unit used to measure early internet speeds. During the 1G and 2G network era, most data transfers were measured in KBPS. For example, 2G Edge could reach about 384 kilobits per second, which translates to roughly 48 kilobytes per second, since 8 bits make 1 byte. At that speed, loading a basic web page or sending an image could take several seconds. It was just enough for emails, text-based browsing, and downloading small songs. KBPS connections are mostly gone today, but they laid the foundation for mobile internet. When you first saw images loading on their phones even slowly, that was KBPS at work. Megabits per second, MBPs. A megabit per second equals 1,000 kilobits per second, or 1 million bits per second. This is the most common unit used for modern internet speeds, whether it's your home Wi-Fi, mobile data, or broadband connection. When 3G networks arrived, average speeds jumped from a few hundred kbps to several mbps, making things like video streaming, social media, and app downloads possible for the first time. Then 4G and LTE took it even further, reaching tens or even hundreds of mbps. But here's the key detail that most people miss. Internet providers measure speed in megabits, while your computer or phone shows download speed in megabytes, and one byte equals eight bits. So, if you have a 100 megabits per second internet plan, your real download speed will show around 12.5 megabytes per second, because 100 divided by 8 is equal to 12.5. That's why you might see your browser downloading a file at 12 megabytes per second, even though your ISP promised 100 megabits per second. It's not slower, it's just a different unit. Gigabits per second, GBPS. A gigabit per second equals 1,000 megabits per second, or 1 billion bits per second. This is where high-speed fiber internet, 5G networks, and data centers come into play. To put it simply, if 1 megabit per second is like a bicycle, 1 gigabit per second is a bullet train. At this speed, downloading a full HD movie takes just a few seconds, not minutes. Gamers, streamers, and cloud professionals rely on GBPS-level connections to move huge amounts of data instantly. When 5G was introduced, real-world speeds started reaching between 1 and 10 gigabits per second, making things like real-time cloud gaming, 8K streaming, and remote computing actually possible. At this level, data isn't just being transferred, it's flowing like water in a high-pressure pipeline. And remember, if you're on a 1 gigabit per second connection, that's 125 megabytes per second in real download terms. That means downloading a 10 gigabytes file would take less than a minute, crazy fast compared to what we had just a decade ago. Terabits per second, TBPS. A terabit per second equals 1,000 gigabits per second, or 1 trillion bits per second. At this point, we're far beyond home internet speeds. This is what the internet backbone itself runs on. Think of it like this. While your home might have a 100 megabits per second or 1 gigabit per second connection, big tech companies like Google, Meta, or Netflix transfer data across their servers at multi-terabit speeds. That's how they're able to stream millions of HD and 4K videos simultaneously without crashing the system. For perspective, a 1 TBPS connection can theoretically transfer around 125 gigabytes per second. That's enough to download your entire 4K movie collection in just a few seconds. Or in a more mind-blowing sense, it could download all videos uploaded to YouTube in a single day in less than an hour. Terabit networks are used for data centers, undersea internet cables, and major ISPs that power entire countries' connectivity. In 2022, researchers even achieved speeds of over 1.8 petabits per second, which is 1,800 TBPS, enough bandwidth to stream every video on YouTube at once. Petabits per second, PBPS. 
A petabit per second equals 1,000 terabits per second, or 1 quadrillion bits per second. That's 1 quadrillion bits every second. This is beyond anything used by consumers. Even global tech infrastructures rarely reach this level. At this scale, data transfer isn't about internet speed anymore. It's about global synchronization. To give you perspective, 1 pbps equals 125 terabytes per second. That means in just one second, you could transfer an entire Netflix library or back up all of YouTube's daily uploads effortlessly. In 2025, researchers in Japan demonstrated a record-breaking 1.02 petabits per second transfer using advanced fiber optics. That's 10 million times faster than the average home internet speed. At these speeds, distance starts to matter less. What matters is data integrity, how to keep that massive flow stable, error-free, and synchronized across the world. EBPS. An exabit per second equals 1,000 petabits per second, or 1 quintillion bits per second. That's 1 quintillion bits moving every single second. At this speed, we're beyond anything human networks currently operate. No internet provider, cloud system, or fiber network on Earth moves data this fast, yet. But it's a target for the future of AI, space communication, and quantum networking. To visualize it, 1 eBPS equals 125,000 terabytes per second. That's enough to transmit the entire contents of YouTube, every video ever uploaded, in just a few seconds. Or imagine syncing all the world's cloud data instantly between continents. That's the dream of exabit networking. In this range, physical cables become a limitation. So researchers are exploring light-based data transfer, quantum teleportation, and satellite laser links that could handle these speeds without traditional fiber. If terabits power the internet backbone today, exabits will one day power the planetary-scaled neural networks, the kind that run global AIs, simulate Earth in real time, or connect Mars to Earth with almost no delay. Zettabits per second, ZBPS. A zettabit per second equals 1,000 exabits per second, or 1 sextillion bits per second. At this stage, we've gone beyond any existing infrastructure. Not even the entire global internet traffic combined comes close. In fact, researchers estimate that the whole internet currently transfers just a few hundred terabits per second, which is trillions of times slower than one zettabit. To give you perspective, 1 ZBPS equals 125 million terabytes per second. That means in one second, you could copy every piece of data humanity has ever created videos, documents, code, databases, and still have room left. Yottabits per second, YBPS. Now this is where you have to stop for a second and ask yourself, can your brain even process this speed? A yottabit per second equals 1,000 zettabits per second, or one septillion bits every second. That's one septillion bits moving in just one second. Let that sink in for a bit. This isn't just fast, it's beyond imagination. At one YBPS, you could literally download the entire internet in less than one second. There's no fiber cable, no satellites, not even today's quantum internet prototypes that can handle this. We're talking about theoretical speeds, the kind that might only exist in quantum data transfer or neural level communication in the far future. To put it into perspective, today's 5G networks peak around one to 10 gigabits per second. A single YBPS connection would be trillions of trillions of times faster than that. At that point, we're not just transferring data anymore. We're transferring knowledge itself. If you want to understand storage units like I explained here, watch my video on digital storage units.